he himself was the student and the headmaster of his own institution my friends had never seen the inside of a school educate your woman in your family and she can educate the society teaching is not everybody's cup of coffee he has that inner feeling that he has achieved at least what he could corner of the yard groups of children can be seen studying hard education is man's true religion Hello hi namaste and welcome to Vidyashram Temple of Excellence I am Nanda Kishore faculty of English in Vidyashram Mysore in my previous session I had spoken about Babar Ali which was written by Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma in session 1 I had discussed that Babar Ali had become the headmaster of his school at the age of 16 years and uh, he had around 800 students in his school and in previous session i had given lot of examples i had discussed about lot of topics one such topic is that that babar ali was just 16 years old and he had begun his school and had 800 students in his school and he was not just the headmaster but he was also the student in kosim bazar raj govind sundari vidyapeet who is studying class 12 don't forget this he himself was the student and the headmaster of his own institution he was studying in other institution as a student who is studying in class 12 that is kosim bazar raj govind sundari vidyapeet and when he comes back home after he finishes his school he runs his own school in his backyard and that had 800 students and he had to get up at 7 am every morning he will do his household chores he finishes up he takes the rickshaw he travels and and he walks 5 kilometers to reach his school where he is studying class 12 but samarpita mukherjee sharma says that what intrigues what shocks the world is that what babar ali does after he comes back from the school because he is working as the headmaster of his own school in today's session in session 2 let us discuss what led him to begin his schools and who recruited them who went on publishing or who went on speaking about his own school where did the help come from in the previous session i told that the school or the education was given free of cost but where did babar ali manage to pay the money for the teaching staff where did he manage to pay the salary how did he manage did he get help from somebody else did somebody help him to run this institution let us see in today's session anand siksha niketan so this is the name of babar ali's school and he had named it as anand siksha niketan don't forget this is one mark question babar ali actually started his school at the mere age of 9 this is very important now he is the headmaster and he is 16 years old but at what age did he begin his school at the age of nine one more question again in fact his school anand sikshan niketan grew out of game what led him to begin the school how did it begin the school anand sikshan niketan it grew out of game what game how we used to play these are the words told by babar ali himself and he says we used to play school school this is one such game where students will just come up together one of the students or one of the boys kids will play teacher or principal and the rest will act as if they are the students play school school with me as teacher he says with me as teacher babar ali used to play the role of teacher my friends had never seen the inside of a school that's the level of poverty in murshidabad where is he from murshidabad west bengal and he says my friends had never seen the inside of a school so they enjoy playing students that's how they enjoyed playing students did babar ali literally teach the students did he literally teach his friends he did they ended up learning arithmetic and enjoying it what did they learn they ended up learning arithmetic said babar ali while trying to explain how he initially started teaching 
that's how he started teaching and as the proverb goes teaching is not everybody's cup of coffee in 2002 the game got institutionalized institutionalized registered to run a school successfully with the strength of eight just eight one more question again in which year did Barbarali school get institutionalized in the year 2002 and the strength was just eight one more question be careful so gradually what happens later so gradually word spread and the numbers grew help began to come from other quarters now who are the people who is going to help Barbara Ali Barbara's own teacher own teachers remember this Barbara is going to school Kosim Bazar Raj Govind Sundari Vidya Peet where he is studying class 12 and his teachers started helping him monks at local Ramakrishna mission this is very important sympathetic IAS officers important point even local cops even local cops when Babar first thought of a midday meal scheme very good he also thought of midday meal scheme he was providing food for his students the rice came from his father's fields Nasruddin Sheikh don't forget he was a jute seller from his father's fields but now then it was coming from his father's fields but now it is coming from whom with the aid of friends in the administration it comes from government stock appreciated very much appreciated I, I would like to just salute all these people for helping Barbara Ali who is just bringing a lot of change in the society there is also a proverb in Kana which says that educate your woman in your family and she can educate the society likewise Barbara Ali is trying to bring in a lot of change in this society today nine years down the line nine years down the line she says so 2002 maybe and after nine years calculate it the school has 60 regular attendees and over 220 students on roll call roll call they just visit on and off they are simply mean they are they just come sit and whenever they get time they go back home they do some household chores they help their parents and they come back and 800 students in total one more question what is the total number of strength of Barbara Ali? 800 students with 10 volunteer teachers how many teachers volunteer teachers they are not paid they are not taking any salary can you do that job here can you do any profession without taking salary volunteering yourself and trying to bring in a lot of change to the society maybe a handful of people are ready to accept this challenge not everybody because you have or we have our own things or stuffs to look at but those kids 10 volunteer teachers teaching grades 1 through 8 from 1 to 8 this little afternoon venture is now registered and recognized by West Bengal state government which means which means students graduated from Barbara Ali school are eligible to be transferred to other local high schools how many of you have heard and felt and seen the dedicated teachers in your life who are so dedicated who are so passionate about teaching who are thinking to educate students who are thinking to bring a lot of change in the society without having much of expectation this are the 10 volunteer teachers who have come up with a lot of courage who have gathered who have thought of bringing in a lot of changes in the society by doing what by educating by just providing what they have got from their teachers author writes transferring of Barbara Ali students to other local high schools so that's how successful Barbara Ali was and that's how calibered these 10 teachers were they were successful they were trying to educate 100% 10% results maybe or those out of those students who are attending Barbara Ali school out of maybe 800 let's say 600 would be definitely promoted to the next other local high schools there are possibilities when the children of the village and the localities nearby are done with their chores this is very important none of your parents are asking you to get up early in the morning and help them in the kitchen or help them or help your dad in sending him to the office 
How many of you will help your parents the way they do or the way they did when you were kids? None of you. You get up, as soon as you get up, you will have a wet coffee in front of you, you will drink it, you go to fresh up, you fresh up and come out, your clothes are pressed, neatly kept, you dress up, you go and sit on the dining table, the breakfast is served, delicious breakfast, bellyful, you come back to the college, you sit here, learn, go back home, every day is completely transfixed, you have just like, you know, everything is served in front of you. But the students in Barbara Ali school, they do, they finish their chores. Village and the localities nearby are done with their chores. When they are done with their chores and the jobs at the daytime, they run to attend Barbara Ali's afternoon school. They, they finish this chores. They do their daily work. It could be helping their parents in the fields or in the mines or it could be somewhere else. They do it and then they come and attend. They are the students studying from 1 to 8. Don't forget that. They arrive in the time for Tulumashi's opening bell. She is one of the characters here. Tulumashi's opening bell. Meet some pure, good, kind souls. So who are these pure, good, kind souls? Let us see it. Clad in widow's whites, stick in hand. Tulurani Hazra, one of the important characters. Note this, this is one mark question. Tulurani Hazra, and who is she? She is an illiterate fishmonger by morning and a crusading educationalist by afternoon. What will she do as I spoke about? Who went on spreading the word? It is nothing but who is none other than Tulurani Hazra. She was the one, a fishmonger, in the morning and by afternoon she is crusading educationalist by afternoon and on fish selling rounds of nearby villagers her job is to confront erring parents erring like you know problematic the parents who are not ready to send their kids for the schools just because they don't have enough money and even though the education is given for free of course their parents they don't want to leave away their kids because they need a helping hand Instead of paying the salary or the wages to some other people, they would expect their kids to come and help them in their daily chores. She would convince them. She would scold them that you are spoiling your daughter's life. You are spoiling your son's life. You people are spoiling your children's profession is to go and get education. Their, that is their profession, not to help you in your farmland. Don't do it. Don't spoil. She would confront their parents who have stopped sending their children to school and to find new students she has recruited 80 till now one more question again how many 80 and what is the total strength of Barbara Ali school 800 it is not maybe 10 percent of so students are already recruited by Tulurani Hazra herself 10 percent it is not an easy person to achieve and without much of expectation, what could a fishmonger do at the most? When she is running out of money in her own pockets, she is trying to educate and she is trying to do a lot more than she could. She is just not drawing a boundary around herself and just trying to be a cocoon, like you know, a bird in, inside the cocoon. No, she is just extending a boundary to educate and recruited 80 students till now. If you can see this in this picture, you will get to see Barbara Ali and a lot of teachers, helping ants, and you can see kids, and she is Tularani Azra. Such a simple people there. No suits, no formal dress, nothing. No ID cards, nothing there. Can you just think of who are these people? They are the ones who are educating the young souls here. They are the teachers, they are the ones who are helping, they are not formally dressed like us, they are not wearing any suits, they are not wearing even the IDs, no uniform. But look at these kids there, they have the back, look at their faces, they have a beautiful smile, that speaks about the achievement. Look at them, he has that inner feeling that he has achieved. At least what he could. A big salute to Bhavarali. The teaching staff of nine 
is made up of high school student volunteers as i told you they are not so educated they are not so very well trained they are not so they, they, they are not possessing any certificate like us but high school student volunteers they also are average teenagers who are helping our barber in making the difference the most educated who is the most educated is Deborita, don't forget this, who is the most educated among all the 10 teachers here? Deborita goes to college in Bahrampur. She is going to college in Bahrampur. Barbara Ali gives lessons just the way he has heard from heard them from his teachers. He is just giving the lesson. If I am Barbara Ali's teacher, I am teaching Barbara Ali and Barbara Ali will just listen to what I am teaching right now and he just stores everything in his head. Maybe he could just add on to his own tricks and tips to reach the level of students and teaches his students after going back home. There is no building or establishment. This is very important now. No infrastructure. There is no building or establishment. This could be asked for four marks for his school. So how will he teach? Where did the students sit? He teaches his students under the open sky. Beautiful. I would love to do this. Just like Shantani Ketan. Have you heard of his Rabindranath Tagore's school? He taught, he spoke about open school. No building, nothing. No AC, no infrastructure, no ventures. If you want to teach about nature, take them to the nature. Make them sit under the tree. If you are teaching about something which is related to nature, take them outside. Let them have first hand experience. While teaching, if you want to make your teaching effective, what is the main method? Take them to the nature. According to Rabindranath Tagore, he says that teaching the students in open school, like you know, out in the sky or under the tree, it is very good. He teaches his students under the open sky. Beautiful. Some children sit in the mud. I'm just giving you the idea. In order to get education, you need not need much of what you have right now. If you have what is required, you can just learn or get educated and get trained. The mud. Others sit on rickety benches under a roof. Homemade shelter. Homemade shelter maybe a piece of wood put together bench fixed done you go and sit there the family chickens this is very important the family chickens scratch around nearby students are sitting on the mud they are sitting on the rickety benches and the family chickens are just passing under their legs but these people are enjoying each and every bit of it the family chickens scratch around nearby in every corner of the yard group, yard, groups of children can be seen studying hard. In every corner. And where is Barbara Ali running his school? In his back yard. And then he says, in, and in every corner of the yard, groups of children can be seen studying hard. Staff and students now. It's much easier to enroll kids who are not old enough. So class 1 and 2 have over 200 students. One more question. Class 8 has just 20 students. One mark. Whatever I underline here could be asked for one mark in your examination. So kindly concentrate. They study 10 subjects. How many? 10. 4 more subjects added to your curriculum. And are mostly taught by Bhavar and Dabarita. Bhattacharya. Remember Deborita who is going to Bairampur? The same Deborita here. And most of the subjects are taught by Babara and Deborita Bhattacharya. Deborita is another volunteer who has been helping out for a long time now. Who is helping out Babar Ali? For a long time now. Textbooks are free from class 1 to 5. But for the rest money needs to be arranged. Remember this again one more question. On any given day, there are close to 400 students physically present in Babar Ali's front yard. Any given day, 400 physically present. What about the 400 then? As I told you, on and off. They go and help the parents. The minute they are done helping their parents, they rush back to Babar Ali's school. It is hard to get the children to listen, being so young themselves. Babar is saying that. Because he himself is a teenager. And how will he teach the teenagers who are just maybe 3 or 4 years younger to him? It is very difficult. The narrow age gap. 
about Babar Ali. The narrow age gap works to our advantage. He says, that narrow age gap. You know, I can just be like a friend to the students whom, whom I'm teaching now, and I can just convince them. There is no fear that the teacher is like strict. I'm gonna punish you today. Now, Babar Ali is just like a friend who is trying to teach them in you know like you know easy easy way or an easy method says Babar we are more like friends he says we are more like friends I don't have to just punish him or beat him that's the reason Babar Ali says the rod is spared in my school spared saved we don't use stick to beat the students just like we are friends we can just go and sit next to him put my hand on his shoulder and tell hey buddy don't worry I'm gonna teach you this today oh I can use different techniques to reach my knowledge or to teach my students. So that's all I got about Babar Ali for now. Babar Ali. Right? Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma says now. Babar Ali. That is not it. That's all for now. But getting to know about a person like him makes me realize how insignificant I am. And yet again, how lucky. I am talking about a person who has brought a lot of change in the society. And even though I finish my story here, Babar Ali's story continues. Babar Ali's story doesn't end in this chapter. It has got a long way to go from now. A long history. He has already become history. He has not only helped put hundreds of children to get enlightened, he has also in inspired millions of youths like us. Samar Pita Mukherjee Sharma is writing this. Babar Ali's tale is a testament to the difference that one person can make in his or her world. In this case, it was a mere child which decided to do something about a situation he felt was unfair. What was unfair? Unfair was the situation of unfair was not getting enough education. He was lucky enough. That, that is the main reason why Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma writes that, you know, like blessed soul. He was getting education somehow because Nasiruddin Sheikh, his father, Babar Ali's father believed he himself was a dropout. Nasiruddin Sheikh was a dropout from the school and he believed that man's education is true religion. He believed that education, now you understand why parents run behind you, confronting you, trying to scold you, trying to embarrass you and asking you to get educated, it's because Nasiruddin a school dropout believes that education is man's true religion. It is not the religion or it is nothing that we go to the temple or the mosque or the church that we just go on visiting and praying. That is not the true religion. He says education is a true religion. And education is not just a simple concept to elaborate that you come to college, you get certified and you walk out. That is not the true education here. Education has got the broad perceptive. The perception is so broad. The, the concept is, is so broad that you cannot simplify it. You cannot oversimplify it either. And Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma writes that Babar Ali's chapter will not end here. It continues. It goes further. There is always a way. Remember this? Where there is a will, there is a way. His story also bears evidence to the fact that if you have a will, then there is a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. That a nine-year-old can, remember this, at what age he began his school? Nine out of game, school, school, and his friends acting as students, and he acted as teacher and learning out arithmetic. That a nine-year-old can alone change the world should be enough inspiration for all of us to come out of our closed cocoons and help make a difference. So isn't it high time that we be, we be the change that we want to see in this world? Question mark. Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma is questioning the readers. Don't we think that we need to come out of our closed cocoons and, and achieve something and give something to this world? Today, Babar Ali, maybe tomorrow it could be someone from among us. She says, maybe it could be one amongst us who could achieve a lot of things and who could just contribute a lot to the society. And it is not very often 
that we come across someone like Babra Ali coming from a small village in Murshidabad. Remember this place. He should be commanded just for the audacity of hoping. It is this hope and the faith that he has upon himself that has helped him come all this way. So here is to Babra Ali. We salute you for dreaming and making your dreams come true. It is not just a salute from Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma. Being one of the readers, even I would like to salute you because being a teacher, it gives me immense pleasure that somebody like you coming from such a poor family and trying to run your own institution is not a small dream that you have achieved and fulfilled. So that's it for today's session. And from the examination point of view, don't forget that this chapter will be definitely asked for 4 marks and 6 mark and 1 mark question. So kindly read this chapter word by word and line by line and try to understand it. And in my next session, I'm going to discuss about the chapter Watchmen of the Lake. Until then, have a good day. Take care.